Good morning, Hojo staff, students, and families. Ya Tebin. We're ready to start our day. So everybody, please stand. Place your right hand over your heart. Our voices are off. Bodies are still. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, September 15th. And you may have noticed that I had my announcements yesterday from another part of the country. I went to Maine for the weekend, but I am back now, as you can see, here in my office. So we're ready to start our day together. But wasn't it interesting, those things that I showed you from in Maine, those things that I had talked about where Winslow Homer lived and where Henry Wadsworth Longfellow lived. Do you know his house was built in 1785? That house that I showed you yesterday, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's house, 1785. Just nine years earlier was the, um, the Declaration of Independence and we had just become a country when that house was built. Interesting, I thought, to learn all those things, to see those things. I hope that I get to take you there someday um, when we do our trip of the Northeast, when we go to Washington, D.C., go to Philadelphia, go to Boston, and then maybe we'll scoot on up to take a peek at a few things um, up in Maine if we can manage it someday when we are able to travel more freely as a group and go to more things. I couldn't take you inside the Longfellow house because it's closed, but it's exactly the same as when he lived there. So someday maybe we can go there because I think almost every grade level has a poem that they memorize from Longfellow. So we can uh, one day hopefully go there together. So Miss Snap has chosen another selection of music for us for this week. So let's listen to it together. Okay, so you can go on to YouTube and play the whole selection if you like. That piece of music is by a female composer. Now, a female composer in 1833, that's pretty unusual. Most of the composers, and I think all of the composers that we have had so far, um, I think there was one person, one female um, that we've had that we've listened to, but other than that, all of the, the classical music has been created by men. So we're lucky today we hear from Clara Schumann. That's her name, can you say that? Clara Schumann. This is the first piece we listened to from Clara Schumann. She wrote this piece when she was a teenager. Can you imagine? Very, maybe the same age as some of you, not too much older than the rest of you, she was writing a piano concerto as a teenager and a woman, a girl in Germany. Amazing. So the name of this piece is Piano Concerto in A Minor, Opus 7. 
and this is by Clara Schumann, Piano Concerto in A minor, Opus 7. All right, we can enjoy that. Now let's listen to one selection from last year. How about this one? Okay, friends, what were we listening to? On the beautiful Blue Danube, or the, the Blue Danube uh, Waltz, the Blue Danube Waltz, um, by Johann Strauss II. Johann Strauss II. Okay, how about this one? Beautiful strings. What are we listening to? Pachelbel's Canon by Pachelbel. Nice job. Okay, friends, we have a piece of art. This is a review. Also, a female artist. Also, in from the 1800s, about 1884 or so. We looked at this one before, but we'll look at some more of her pieces. Do you remember who this is by? Mary Cassatt. You say that? Mary Cassatt. And the name of this piece is Children Playing on the Beach. That seems like a good title. And do you notice their clothing? Sort of reminiscent of the same time period of Winslow Homer. That's how little children would dress to go to the beach. And you see them playing in the sand with their sun hats. Interesting. Time gone by different way of dress and different but still enjoying the same activity that many of us would enjoy not too many beaches in New Mexico but we'll get to the East Coast one day and you'll see okay and we have a female poet this week this one is called Knoxville Tennessee it comes from the third grade selection of poems so if you are a third grader this year you would be memorizing this poem perhaps last year or the year before if you remember you can say it with me Knoxville Tennessee is a place uh, a city in Tennessee Knoxville and this poem is by Nikki Giovanni and she is an African-American poet who used to spend her summers in Knoxville Tennessee and Strangely enough, my dad, his sister, and her family, all her children, live in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I've been there one time, up in the Smoky Mountains. So Knoxville, Tennessee by Nikki Giovanni. I always like summer best. You can eat fresh corn from daddy's garden and okra and greens and cabbage and lots of barbecue and buttermilk and homemade ice cream at the church picnic and listen to gospel music outside at the church homecoming and go to the mountains with your grandmother and go barefooted and be warm all the time not only when you go to bed and sleep hmm. do you have some favorite memories of going someplace in the summer with your family so nikki giovanni shared her experiences Lots of it was food. I can't blame her. Hmm? I just came back from Maine where I grew up and we had our seafood and enjoyed ourselves there and took a drive around the old neighborhood where I had grown up just to see what it looks like today. So many memories and you're making those memories now and one day when you're older you'll look back on those hopefully with with warm feelings like she has like you can feel warm all the time not only when you go to bed and to sleep and to dream but you have those memories to keep you warm so nice poem for us today all right one new piece of architecture for us to learn this is the jefferson memorial 
in Washington, D.C., right? We have lots of memorials in Washington, D.C. Don't forget Lincoln Memorial. That's right. And don't forget this one. Front of the White House, back. So when you see it on TV, you know. Very important building right here. U.S. Capitol building. That's right. And I think we have one more. Yes, we do. Washington Monument. That's right. All right, friends. So we don't have any birthdays today, but we do have two yesterday. And I'm sorry I did not get to mention those yesterday. Uh, I'm not as clever as some of our teachers, and I have a lot to learn about how to put my little movie clips together. So I had to just post them as separate clips. So I didn't get to tell you the birthdays that we had yesterday. Harmony and Vivian had birthdays yesterday. And so happy birthday to you two ladies. Uh, no birthdays today, but we do have a few tomorrow. So we'll look forward to that. So announcements. Um, hopefully you are working hard on your canvas. If you are struggling, make sure you reach out to your teacher. Um, let's do our literacy work, our English work, and our math work first. Let's get those done. Uh, and then, um, then go on to do the literature and the um, science and social studies, or uh, sorry, history and grammar. Let's do those, the literacy, English, writing, and math first. Let's, let's knock those out first. Very important that we not fall behind in those areas. Uh, and then uh, if you're struggling with that, make sure you tell your parents or parents, make sure you communicate with teachers. Um, and also with me if you are still struggling after some attempts to try to get that sorted out. I know these are hard times. Um, you know, everyone's patience is running low. People are frustrated very easily. Children are frustrated. Parents are frustrated. Teachers are frustrated. But there's not much we can do about the situation except to be the best. I can be the best me that I can be during this time. And you be the best you you can be during this time and we'll be stronger for it and we'll make the progress we need to make and then when we come out on the other side we'll be stronger and smarter and better for the way we behaved during this stressful time I know it's stressful but we're gonna get through it and we're gonna come out on the other side so let's say our student pledge together I will do the good, I will learn the true, and I will love the beautiful. And I hope you have a great day.